So, um, yeah, good afternoon from the um, East Coast time, everyone. Um, we're at a minute over the hour, and our speaker is on. So uh, I know that individuals will be coming online um, over the next uh, few minutes. So um, given that we have um, a really robust presentation for you, or our speaker does, and I have some introductory um, slides that I'd like to share with you, we're going to go ahead and get um, started. Uh, just a quick reminder that this is a, um, this webinar um, titled Preliminary Research Findings, What Factors Influence Guideline Panel Decision Making is a uh, research in progress seminar. And what that means is that um, you uh, can send me your questions via chat um, as a moderator, I will uh, call your questions and comments and deliver them uh, to Ben through voice, and Ben can reply to you through voice. Um, we may, he may opt to uh, answer your question at a later point in his presentation if he'll be covering it, but the notion is, is that this is intended to be interactive. You don't have to hold your questions until the end. So please send your questions to me, Mary Nix, the moderator, uh, through chat, um, and I'll make sure that, uh, that Ben receives them. Okay, so um, let's move on. The, um, the Guideline International Network webinar series, of course, um, happens because the North America community uh, is, belongs to the parent organization of Guideline International Network. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, it was founded in 2002. Its mission is to lead, strengthen, and support collaboration in guideline development, adaptation, and implementation all around the world. Uh, it really is a network of, of international organizations and individuals, as you can see from the slide. There are many ways to get involved um, through uh, the Guideline International Network, as you can see here. There are a number of working groups, um, and there are also the regional uh, collaboratives like that that we have um, here in, the North, in North America. The benefits of becoming a member of a Guideline International Network are many, as you can see from this slide. There is a guideline of libra um, a library of guidelines um, offered um, through uh, the GIN website. Um, there's opportunities to share evidence tables and systematic reviews. There's access to experts and colleagues. Participate in those groups that I just identified in the prior slide. You get a discount on the annual conference. For those of you who know or don't know, um, our, the next event is coming up. The next conference is in September. Um, and so if you become a member, you can get a discount on a conference rate. There's a project board that you would have access to. And you also have free access to the Dynamed product um, uh, related to reviews and guidelines. And there's more information, of course, at the GIN website. The link is noted in this slide. Our North America community um, includes users, developers, and researchers from Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. who are interested in the clinical practice guidelines field. We offer webinars like this one. Um, we'll uh, sponsor or promote a regional event. So if you have something coming up that you would like us to promote on your behalf to engage with the community, please let us know. Um, we um, uh, support sharing and collaboration um, among our major countries of Canada, Mexico, and the United States. So now I'd like to move us right into our presentation. First, some introductions, if you'll bear with me. I want to do our speaker <laughs> uh, justice here. So, presenting today is Dr. Benjamin uh, Jobekovic. He's a professor at the City of Hope, where he serves as Director of Program for Evidence-Based Medicine and Comparative Effectiveness Research, City of Hope. And he's the Director of Research at the Department of Supportive Medicine, City of Hope. 
His main academic and research interest lies in attempts to measure and optimize clinical research and practice of medicine by understanding both nature of medical evidence and decision making. To this effect, his work aims to integrate methods and techniques across evidence-based medicine, predictive analytics, health outcomes research, and decision sciences. The role of uncertainty and rationality in science and clinical medicine has been one of the common themes across his work, particularly evident in his analysis of equipoise and the role of regret. Dr. Jubegovich has systematically applied the science of evidence-based medicine and decision analysis to the entire fields of hematology and oncology that resulted in two books. The book on reasoning and decision-making in hematology was listed as one of the best books by the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, and the book, Decision-Making in Oncology, Evidence-Based Management, was assessed as one of the first and best attempts to apply an evidence-based approach to the practice of medical oncology. As of January 2018, he has published 315 papers in peer-reviewed journals, 190 abstracts and numerous book chapters. He's also received numerous awards for his work, which has also been published in major scientific and medical journals, including Nature, Lancet, JAMA, New England Journal of Medicine, etc. He's also widely taught on these subjects. During the last 20 years, Dr. Jubekovich has received continuous external funding by both federal and private entities. He was also selected in the Newsweek's list of top cancer doctors, and since 2011, continuously selected in the 1% of top U.S. doctors by the U.S. News & World Report in the field of hematology. Uh, welcome, Ben. We're going to go on a first-name basis to this event. Uh, I'm Mary Nix, your moderator. I work at the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and I'm the chair-elect of the Gen North America Steering Committee. Today's webinar, as I noted, will be of the research seminar type format and will be interactive in three ways. One, the speaker has polling questions we will pose to you at two different points in the presentation. Your answers will help guide Dr. Jubekovich's presentation to you. And two, send your questions for the speaker to me, Mary Nix, by the WebEx chat feature, and I will pose them to him during the course of the presentation. And then three, Send your questions and comments to me, again, via the WebEx chat feature, and I will pose them at the end of the presentation. So many ways to engage with us in this important um, webinar. Let's see, some quick reminders. Within several weeks, the recording of this webinar will be available at the GIN uh, uh, website under Library and Webinars. Our next webinar for the GIN North America series has not yet been confirmed. We're in the process of determining not only what platform we'll use. Um, today's webinar and the last few have been supported through the use of the WebEx platform offered by the Agree Enterprise. Um, we're not sure if we're going to be able to continue to do that. So we're looking for a new home, a new platform to do our webinars while also uh, nailing down our next topic. Continue, continue, please, to send your ideas for topics and speakers to guidelines.northamerica at gmail.com. Again, as I noted before, registration is open for the GIN Annual Conference. Uh, be great to have you there, see you there, um, have a great contingent from the North America community. Um, and in the meantime, um, Feel free to use that same Gmail account to send us any questions that you might have. Okay, I think that then we are ready to move to you and our, we're going to get started with our poll questions, right? Yes, indeed. Very Thank good. You. So everyone, I will send to you through the chat feature a link to some poll questions that your answers will help our speaker know in this set of questions who is out there um, and some of the work that you do. So if you would look at your chat and 
click on the link that I've posted in that chat, allow the form to load, and then answer those questions, I can relay to our speaker your responses. So it may take a, a minute. And then as our, as our audience does that, I'm going to load your slides and then turn the, the control over to you. Okay. And I think, Yorado, you'll have to do that. I don't see the option to give Ben the, um, the control. Yeah. So I'll wait for your Yorado to help okay. pass that along. Okay, so I guess yeah, everybody can see the uh, very first the slide. Hello. I can, can you see hear me, Mary, and others. I can yes. see it there. Yeah. So I, I, I hope everybody can see the the first uh, uh, title of slides. And thank you very much, uh, Mary, for this kind introduction and everybody actually joining us today. It is really important to stress th these are preliminary research findings and exactly reflecting what this seminar, the series seminar, is about. So, um, uh, uh, the, the, my colleagues are already reviewing uh, the finding as we uh, as we uh, speak, uh, 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 and then some of these results uh, or finding or presentation may change. And partly, I'm, uh, I, I'm also I'm hoping to get a feedback from you. Uh, I mean, everybody who is um, uh, participating in conference, so that may actually help, help finalize the, the the results of the. Of this, uh, at least from this uh, particular part of the research. So, um, uh, so is uh, uh, let me just go. In terms of uh, you know the, the declaring conflict interest, I really don't have any competing interests related to any aspect of this uh, research presentation or, or conduct of this research. Uh, this project has been supported by a grant from Agency of Healthcare Research and Quality. The contents is sole responsibility of, of, uh, of, of me in this case and does not necessarily represent official view of the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. Uh, so, um, uh, it, 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 in a way, then by introduction, I, th I think it's uh, uh, to all people who are on, uh, on this particular conference, it's not secret that, uh, that today's health uh, care really does not deliver, uh, uh, th th does not uh, meet our expectation. And at the same time, it is uh, characterized both by overuse, meaning uh, uh, lots of health care estimated by 30 percent, certainly in the U.S., health care is a wasteful and appropriate resulting in overuse. On the other hand, we do not deliver services that we ought to be delivering, and some estimates more than 50% of our healthcare services are actually are, are underused. Many, many reasons are published in the literature why is that so, but if you try to group those reasons in kind of a general type of, um, of uh, the, the general categories, two actually emerge. One is the, the poor or lack of high quality evidence related to the effects of most healthcare intervention. The second is suboptimal decision making, um, to the point that uh, uh, some modeling uh, uh, indicated that even personal decisions may be the leading cause of death, and 80% of all healthcare expenditures are affected by physician decisions. So, if that's the case, then obvious uh, natural response to this is. Uh, is there any kind of way, uh, way or the tools that we can address uh, the issue of the, uh, of the uh, evidence and decision making? And obviously, as Mary uh, put, uh, introduced in the, uh, the beginning, uh, the, the, gui the guidelines, guidelines international network, and developing and uh, creating and disseminating evidence-based guidelines has become one of the key approaches to improving clinical decision making that indeed uh, address those two aspects uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, or, or, re or causes of inadequate health care. 
that seems to be uh, a responsible uh, for today's uh, uh, situation in, in, uh, in most of the healthcare around the world. Uh, trying, okay, good, <laughs> okay. So indeed, uh, some writing actually indicate that inadequate adherence to uh, clinical practice guidelines to present the third leading cause of preventable patient death and one third of unnecessary healthcare spending. Uh, at the same time, measuring adherence to clinical practice guidelines um, is really at the heart of science of quality improvement, and certainly in the uh, United States, but in, uh, I believe in some other country, increasingly it's being used to, uh, as a tool to, to, uh, toward so-called merit-based financing of healthcare. So, but the problem is that uh, as important as guidelines are to really improve how uh, our patient, uh, the, the, our decision making and, and patient uh, outcomes, not, all, not uh, all guidelines are created equal, as I'm sure that is very well known to all of you on this conference call. Institute of Medicine originally introduced the clinical practice guidelines in a way to improve decision making and, and, and healthcare back in 1990s, and most recently, uh, revise that uh, definition uh, to basically indicate that clinical practice guidelines are statements that include recommendation intended to, and again, in my mind, very important aspect of, of, of what they do is, is aiding decision making and optimizing patient care that are informed by systematic review evidence and assessment of benefits and harms alternative care options. Uh, and many guideline systems uh, have been developed during the last quarter of century, but Institute of Medicine in 2011, a uh, very influential publication, stressed that we need to develop guidelines we can trust. Because, as, as, as you well know, the guidelines being widely used, uh, uh, um, thousands of physicians are uh, 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 following them or not following them, however you want to look at that. And, they, uh, and the way they're going to really adhere to these guidelines affect thousands and thousands of patients' uh, lives or outcomes. Now, out of these many systems that actually have emerged during the last quarter of century, GRADE has emerged as the leading system for rating quality evidence and strength recommendations. So what I'm going to present today is really related to the, one of the key eligibility criteria for us has been that the, that the guidelines, have, uh, they, they have to use GRADE system. And GRADE has been endorsed by many organizations, more than 100 organizations have adopted the GRADE today, I, I believe so. Um, now, I will not spend time of, uh, here discussing about nuances and, and, uh, and, and um, details how actually uh, guidelines are uh, the guidelines may make a recommendation according to grade because I believe most of you are probably familiar with that. Nevertheless, let me just uh, briefly mention that uh, according to grade, guidelines panels are instructed to make recommendations by considering certain actually um, certain important domains or factors. Most important would be uh, uh, the, uh, the looking, uh, assessing a quality of evidence or, or certainty of evidence, or sometimes it's known as our confidence in, in the underlying evidence. Uh, the other factors that the, that the guidelines panel are instructed to consider is the assessment of magnitude of benefit and harms of these competing interventions that are being considered for, um, uh, that are being considered in, in terms of making recommendations for or against those recommendations. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the third factor would be assessment of values and preferences of, of, uh, of, uh, of patients that, um, that, uh, that or stakeholders that are affected by guidelines panel recommendation. And finally, consideration of resource uh, use, cost, along with visibility, accessibility, and equity. These are all these factors that grade codified in terms of importance that need to be considered by guidelines panel when recommendations for or against the intervention is made. Uh, so, but the, what, the, what is the really important to understand that the clinical practice guidelines are product of a group decision making. Uh, as you well know, usually 10 to 20 individuals with varying level of expertise, some are content, some are clinical, some are methodological, some are patient representative, 
uh, uh, serve on the panels to make actually a recommendation that eventually will affect the practice of medicine. Each panelist, however, has a unique perspective and approach to decision making. And what actually remains unclear how and to what extent guidelines panelists discuss and consider those factors, those criteria that are formally or informally included in the system for generated recommendation. We argue, given the fact that, um, that, um, that um, healthcare is a, so, uh, that, that, uh, that healthcare industry is a such a large, uh, so, so important, and the United States alone, actually 18% of GDP is, uh, this is spent on healthcare, um, and given the fact that increasingly guidelines are being used to, as, a, as a mechanism uh, to, um, to help determine uh, uh, allocation of resources, meaning fin uh, funding of, uh, of health care, we believe understanding of these processes of the groups that, this, that they, they, they are actually finally making this recommendation is so important to the point that it would be ethically inexcusable not to understand this, uh, the, 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 the processes behind of the, uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, guidelines recommendations. Sorry, I'm trying to move my... Okay. So, um, But the, uh, the so 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 it's really kind of a mind-boggling that but for all of the uh, importance of the guidelines and uh, and how the, how we, uh, for the practice of medicine that very little has been done in terms of studying this guidelines panel decision making. When you really think about grade, another actually uh, uh, clinical, clinical practice guidelines system, it's important to understand these are so-called normative system. Normative system, uh, they codify factors in, in terms of a, a normative statement. The normative statement relates to those, to the statement that uh, we or somebody should be or ought to be actually doing when in this particular case when it producing clinical practice guidelines. Uh, so, um, however, we also know from the abundance of, um, uh, of uh, uh, literature and decision making that what people should be doing uh, is often different what actually they actually end up doing. So that's known in literature as ought versus is phenomena. Whether we ought to be actually making recommendation for or against some uh, some uh, some intervention could be completely different what we end up doing in 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 a, in a real world. That is known in literature as normative descriptive gap. Um, in other, uh, at the same time, uh, mechanism for the formulation of those guidelines judgment remains rather black box operation. We have a grade or other system that have a very well defined inputs and outputs in terms of what, uh, what, what need to go into and what need to come out of the process, but internal mechanism of workers and the mechanism how this process is actually, which factors affect those processes, are they really not known. So, and, and this is really, all of this background is just to come to this, the, 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 the really the meat of, of this project, which is really to understand which of these grade and non-grade factors do affect uh, the way guidelines make recommendations, which grade or non-grade factors associate with those trend recommendations when panels uh, vote or determine or make a, a, or, or issue statement that, that particular intervention should be or not be endorsed. So at this point, at this point, I like actually, I, I don't really, I haven't really seen results from the first uh, batch of the survey, but I'd like to stop it here and, 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 uh, and maybe uh, 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 invite the comments or, or, or maybe I'm going too fast. I don't know if uh, hopefully all of this is coming across, but I'd then like to ask Mary to actually release Second set of the of the of the uh, of the of, of the survey, which I really would uh, appreciate your response to, because I haven't really seen at least I uh, and and in, uh, in my screen I didn't really see any response to the first set of the questions. Yeah, Ben, it's Mary. Thanks. Thanks for taking a pause. 
Um, I can tell you that I'm having trouble um, getting the, re, uh, the screen that shows the responses to render appropriately on my laptop. So uh, Urata is looking to see if she can see them a little better um, or see them at all. I can't see them at all. We'll see what she can come up with. In the meantime, though, I, I know that folks um, got the first set of polling questions. I, I did get a, I did do a test with Urato, and she replied that, in fact, she did um, the link worked for her, and she responded. So I'm presuming that others did the same. Uh, I just don't have the results to share with you right now, Ben. I will, though, go ahead and send out um, the second uh, batch of questions that you would like to um, uh, learn about from your audience. So hang on, everyone. Here they come. So I just sent the uh, the link. Um, to the next set of questions. There are four uh, questions also in that set, and that's the last set of polling questions. So, uh, yep, please access that link from the chat feature. Allow the page to load. Um, read through those questions. You'll see in these questions, Ben is interested in understanding um, what you know about grade or non-grade factors as influencers. Um, which grade factor is more influential than other grade factors? Which non-grade factor um, is, is more influential than other non-grade factors? This is all what you think is the answer. And then um, the last question gets at um, the for or against recommendation statements. Um, and which factors, are, or is it the same factors that affect four, um, making four recommendations as making against the recommendation? So um, you'll see those questions, and I appreciate your answering those for Ben. And hopefully Ben will be able to get those responses and share those with you um, okay. soon. I, I'm actually really, really interested in, in uh, learning your results and also before showing you our results because I don't want the, the our results are influencing your vote because some of what I'm going to show you is actually related to this question that I'm asking you about. Uh, one of the problems in the webinar, I, 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 I can't gauge the, 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 the dynamics on tempo of my presentation because I don't see the audience as a, uh, kind sure. of – yeah, I I agree, Ben. That is a challenge. Um, it certainly is a challenge. I agree. But if somebody send the email or saying or chat, you know, Correct. slow down or repeat this, uh, yeah, I'll be very happy to do it. You know, so exactly. You know. And I I did also send out um, uh, a chat to everyone to say, hey, has Ben said anything you don't understand? Um, anything you don't agree with? Right? Because I thought you'd like that too. Um, to know where people might push back a little bit. Um, but I haven't heard anything from anybody. Um, so uh, to me, that means all systems are, we just keep going, Ben. Okay, let me go. Okay, so that that was uh, in terms of uh, in, uh, inter, the uh, introduction. And I'm now, uh, I'll be moving actually to the results. And before I do that, again, let me just repeat actually that Many, many factors have been identified in literature that can affect the way people make decisions. If you try really to group them together, you can group them into these three generally broad three, uh, group of categories of, of factors that affect the way people make the, their decisions. One is just the general decision feature itself. For example, we know, and the studies have shown, the recommendation uh, if you make recommendation for high stakes versus low stakes situation, or if you make uh, the, uh, guidelines, for example, for vulnerable population and politically charged atmosphere, um, uh, the, uh, uh, those fa the, the, you know the, the decision may come completely uh, differently just as a result actually that the panel act make decisions based on on, on whether we, uh, whether they are making recommendation for uh, high stakes versus low stakes uh, uh, situation, for example. But also, we all know, it's not a surprise, I think, to anyone, that contextual factors, situation itself, affect the way we make the decisions. We know time pressure, cognitive load, the way information is framed, 
um, conflict of interest, certainly. All kind of biases can affect the way we actually make recommendations or, or how we make decisions. And finally, we're all different people. We all actually have a, a, our, our, character, uh, our individual characteristics, including the way how we actually our default cognitive style, decision-making style, often affect actually the way we make decisions. For example, some of us are more intuitive, others are more deliberative. Um, uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, the, in, in, uh, uh, the, the professional background, methodology, expertise, and all of these things actually do affect the way people uh, make decisions. So these factors need to be taken into consideration when we actually eventually find, uh, uh, analyze the um, uh, in which we eventually uh, uh, conduct analysis in terms of uh, finding uh, predictors of strength recommendation. Okay, so at the time when we started the project, we were really lucky that the American Society of Hematology convened uh, 10 panels to develop uh, an, uh, 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 recommendations for management of, uh, of a venous thromboembolism. That was really a feat for us, and I, I can't really thank enough for uh, Ash and, and um, that allowed us actually to, to, uh, to uh, uh, basically um, have access to these panels. And the results today are really completely related to our first experience of uh, analyzing, uh, 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 analyzing how Ash guidelines panel uh, uh, made a recommendation. Now this is just a briefly overview of how we uh, how we conducted the study. So uh, uh, so we co collected the number of the data and uh, and also Ash with, uh, the uh, Ash with, uh, staff was really kind to uh, to share the data they had collected with us so we can merge it with our data. Um, those, so before the meeting, we collected data on demographics and cognitive styles, and tried in, in, in some cases to get actually people so panel judgment. On, on all of these great domain that they will take into consideration later on in, when they issue the final recommendation. Then we recorded a meeting, um, uh, mostly for qualitative analysis, and uh, attended the meeting um, ourselves. And then uh, at, the, at the, the meeting, which was a face-to-face -face meeting with all of the panel members actually uh, deliberated and made final um, a recommendation, we then collected these individual votes or judgments after the, 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 the final recommendation was issued. And uh, the, in, the, in this particular uh, the, uh, the case, ASH panel, we're, we're making a, a, rec a recommendation based on, on overall consensus. But uh, in our case, we actually obtained the data on every individual uh, person's judgment. So we both collected data on consensus and individual person's judgment on all of these. Um, uh, different uh, domains that they actually deliberated on. Ben, excuse me, it's Mary. Yeah. I want to let you know that uh, through some troubleshooting, uh, I was able to get the responses um, to the poll questions. So w where would you like to start? I have the responses to the first four questions, which I know you're way past, but you could still get to know who's in the audience. And then I have the responses to the second set of questions. Would so you mind sure. showing them? Is it possible to show them uh, now? Or how? Oh, that's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I might be able to. Let's okay, see. Great. Hold on. Um, let's see. Uh, hang on. That would be fun, right? So let's That'll see. That would be if really I fun, and then it would help me adjust the the the. the you know, um, kind of an angle of presentation, so to speak. Right. So let's see. You may have to turn the control back to me. Let's see. I don't think you can do that. Yeah, there'll be a Yerado, I think she needs to do that. And actually, Yerado, you could post them too, and we could speak to them instead of uh, if you're receptive to that, Yerado, and then we could walk through it. Um, ben and I could walk through them if you just want to post them as the hostess, if you're receptive to that. I just made you the Okay. Area. Okay. Thanks. If you have it up, go ahead. Okay. Let's see. Um, let me so pull it share your screen or your file. Yeah, I'm going to share the file. Okay. Oh. 
what's going on my screen. It'll just get confusing. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm going to pull it up. Uh, let's see. Of course, I can't find it among all my many files. <laughs> hang on. Okay, hang on. Uh, Okay. Okay. There it is. Okay. And it should show up in a chat window or is there no, 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 no. No, it's going to show up on the screen. Hang on. Okay. Okay. I can right. see it loading now. Oh, it's oh, sideways. Uh, row, mm. row. Mm. <laughs> oh, the joys of technology. Okay. So we have a 45 people. That's nice to know. Nice All number. Right. Let me try this again because it's rendering right on my screen. So hang on, everyone. Um, yes. Okay. Let's try it this way. Okay, great. Yeah. See it? Does everyone see it now? Can you see it, Ben? Yeah, I yes, can see we it. Can see yeah, it. I, uh, very nicely. Uh, I presume, uh, and we can comment as we go along if you don't mind. Most people, I presume, uh, the. the the, the largest category, I don't see really uh, categorization, but I presume most people are guidelines developers that I can. Correct. Uh, That's fine. Yeah. Correct. And ben, I just want to alert you that we have almost twice as many participants than have participated in the poll. So that's very important right. to know. Response rate yeah. is about 50%. So, yes. Okay. Thank you, Gerardo. Mm -hmm. so that very much. That's a super important to know. Oh, okay. And then, oh, did you want to go back? So yeah, no, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. Most are guideline developers, right, or systematic reviewers. That was the second item. Okay. Um, what, the, which organization do you represent? The first one was, I think, professional society? Yeah, that's uh, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, oops, sorry. Oh. This one, number three, didn't turn out, right? I I'm thought we, yeah, oh, yeah. Having trouble seeing it. Yeah, there is a 44 responses, but I don't see it. <laughs> okay, and then the last one, um, what guideline system? Uh, so the grade system? is, uh, okay, so three quarter of people are using grade. Okay, so I presume everybody is familiar with the grade then. That's, and there are some others and would be good to maybe later on know which are the others, so. Okay, okay. would it be possible to load it up the second uh, batch of answer? Yep, doing it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. It's loading. Okay. Yep. So this is really interesting. So most people believe it will be about equally grade and non-grade. Okay. Okay. Okay, super interesting. Okay, can we just go next? Sure. Uh, okay. Um, what, six is which grade factor affects guideline recommendations the most? And here's the um, the response. So, so, mm -hmm. so most people believe it's a, I think it's a blue is a certainty of evidence and balance yeah. benefit and harms. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. next. Okay. Uh, yeah, number go seven, ahead. which non-grade factor affects the guideline panel's recommendation the most? I you know, ask people to select one. So which one do they think? Wow, that the is, I, 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 maybe you can read, but does it stay here time? The most people believe time constraint at the meeting? No, I think that's experience of the panel members. It's a, it's a brighter green. I okay, think it's the fourth option, experience of the panel member. Okay, experience of the panel member. Okay, yeah, because I. That's a prominent non-grade factor. Okay, so that, okay, okay, that is, okay. that is really interesting. Okay. Okay. And now the last one. Okay, it's equally split. Yeah, <laughs> which, do you believe the same factors affect the panel member uh, when they, uh, same factors affect guidelines panel members when they make 
the judgment for or against health intervention. Very equally split. Yes. Okay, uh, this is really fantastic. Really allows me to, uh, because as, as, you, as you can really uh, see where I'm getting with this is I'm trying, going to try to answer all of these questions or rather address all of these questions and, and now we can all discuss it, how it pan out in terms of your expectation and certainly our expectation, our hypothesis when we initially actually proposed this. Um, um, uh, this project. So, so I'm, 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 I'm actually so grateful for, for these responses. Um, I think I can, can I get back my, the control? Yurato, you'll take care of that, right? In the meantime, yes. um, while Yurato does that, Ben, um, there's a, uh, a questions come in. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. And maybe you'll get to this, so just say if you are. How should the evidence and decision framework be used when the findings from the systematic review end up having to be a narrative summary due to high heterogeneity rather than meta-analysis? And two, is the evidence and decision framework used for each outcome for a specific research question? Uh, so Do you need to repeat that? The, the, fir the first question, I w uh, uh, I can discuss it, but uh, this project cannot answer. I can tell you, I have my own views. So, the, the, <laughs> so okay. So, so that is that is the part of the of the guidelines uh, system to try to really integrate it uh, within the system. So, I yeah, again, I, I can. Well, but that, but this, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned that, um, uh, Ben, because the evidence decision um, framework and related tools is a topic that has come up as a potential topic for a GIN uh, North America webinar, where we would just have a presentation on it. So, uh, you know, as one of those innovative tools in, um, in, in a guideline space. So, if you think it's better to um, uh, make sure that we include that um, as part of a presentation on the ETD um, framework, uh, feel free to punt it right back to me, Ben, and um, I'll steward it through. I believe it is going to be key, uh, key actually emerging uh, findings from, certainly from uh, this presentation, as I would absolutely uh, 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 concur with you that that, that, that should have been more widely or widely actually discuss it and, and I'll, as I move forward, I'll, I'll give you different uh, reasons why that will be the case. Um, Great. So, so completely agree with you. Uh, I forgot what is the second question, uh, but or maybe we can do later. And yeah, so. it was, um, is the ETD used for each outcome for a specific research question? Yes. Is it used per and outcome? That's, okay. and that's, that, according to grade, that's, that, that's exactly being used, yeah. And Very then, good. So let me, let me just go move, uh, move forward because I think uh, the, the, which I, which I didn't explain it, but the discussion already uh, uh, went along. Everybody saw the slide about uh, grade evidence to decision or recommendation framework. That is very important to understand that in this particular uh, uh, ASH panels, and so the, the result that I'm presenting is uh, completely, uh, uh, the, 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 pro the, the, the results are based on very structured use of evidence decision framework where chair and co-chair would a guide um, panel members re related to all of these different great domain to make their judgment about that domain, about that factor, and then eventually consensus was made uh, uh, in terms of uh, what panel thought was a quality of, uh, of uh, let's say, evidence, uh, what is the balance benefit and harms, uh, um, uh, you know, the cost, uh, recommend, you know, the, the cost and all other issues before they finally issued recommendations for or against uh, uh, um, uh, recommendation. Uh, so that is really very important to have in mind. So today, um, I'm going to show results qualitative and quantitative analysis. Unfortunately, results were so-called lens model. We just didn't have enough data to, to complete this analysis actually from the, from the ASH. And I'll explain that in the very, uh, later on. So and this is just briefly really to show you we, we approach uh, 
uh, 10 panels, uh, 137 members, and uh, in just an interest time, I'll, for the quantitative analysis, I'll just uh, really uh, say that we had a data uh, from eight panels, uh, 101 members attended the final meeting, which is the, really our denominator, and you can see here a rather, uh, rather respective um, uh, com uh, completion rate, about 96%. For qualitative analysis, we recorded a qualitative analysis of all 10 panels uh, and 126 participants actually attended the final meetings where we recorded data. So here's the first uh, results from qualitative analysis. What, what we have, uh, and as, as, as you remember, our main goal is to understand the uh, proportion of, 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 the, of, the, of the factors, grade versus non-grade that dominate uh, discussion and decision making eventually. So as you can see here, at no surprise to probably most of you, um, uh, most of discussion went on, on, this, uh, on, on uh, uh, the panel members or panels actually discussed quality of evidence, followed interestingly, at least to me actually, by, uh, by resource and, 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 and resource use and cost. Surprisingly, at least to me, clinical experience, legal issues, political issues, that all of these things that we often see here that, that, that affect or, 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 or believe to, be, to affect the guidelines of uh, uh, panel decision-making, we really consider less than 1% of time. So the, so the grade factor appears to actually be largely dominating uh, discussion according to qualitative analysis. Now, if you ask a second who did the talking, here, this was a little bit interesting. Ch chairs and co-chairs actually uh, uh, basically uh, uh, led and discussed the, 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 the individuals who actually did the most of the talking. Of, of more than 55% of all uh, discussion actually or utterance were made by chair and co-chair. Interestingly, patient representatives or stakeholders were uh, overall really uh, involved less than 1% of the time. Okay, so that was the first part of qualitative analysis. Um, now I'm just going to quantitative analysis. Again, as I mentioned, uh, for quantitative analysis, collected data from eight panels, so from 101 uh, participants, they issued 104 recommendations. Altogether, the, the, these panel members issued more than 9,000 judgments related to all different domains that we eventually collected. So I mentioned at the beginning those characterization of the different factors that affect the, uh, the, uh, the uh, decision making. So from the analytical point of view, we now link to all of the, uh, the, the we now link to all of this uh, 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 identify specific variables that are linked to to, to uh, major uh, uh, characteristics um, of of, of uh, uh, factors that affect our decisions, meaning. Uh, um, for example, for, uh, the, for the, the importance of decision features have been have, uh, have been uh, have been uh, captured by, for example, including a, a, a variable about whether guidelines were issued for vulnerable population or not, or feeling pressure to issue a particular recommendation. Context um, which, uh, and, um, is, uh, were captured by uh, recording data on conflict of interest, uh, role of, of the panel. Um, and uh, individual characteristics of decision makers, we, ex uh, uh, we captured that uh, by uh, asking, uh, uh, obviously we collected some demographic data and then did something, uh, the, the survey on a, cogn on a so-called cognitive styles, mostly to understand whether decision ma uh, makers, individual, uh, the panel members, uh, for example, experience, uh, they, 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 they have a tendency to, for example, intuitive versus deliberative thinking, uh, whether they're so-called maximizer um, versus satisfizer, meaning they, they're looking for a best possible recommendation versus good enough recommendation, um, whether regret about making wrong, a wrong recommendation play a role, et cetera. So we, uh, so we collected all of these variables plus obviously great factors. Altogether, 27 variables entered in the final analysis. And I think, okay, I think this is the important technical slide to understand because, uh, uh, and so I'm going to spend a, a, a minute or two to explain that. 
So we did uh, we did uh, 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 use so-called uh, uh, two-level hierarchical random effect multivariate regression analysis to account for both for panel level factors, individual level factors. Remember, each individual would issue judgment um, uh, issue judgment on a number of these uh, recommendations. So you can um, and, uh, you have to assume that each individuals have a particular that, that he his or her responses are kind of a dependent within a set of those recommendations. So we have to take, take that in account. But also that recommendations made in a, in a, uh, is a nested within the panels. So the panels uh, members affect each other. So that has to be taken account analysis. So for main analysis. Uh, we did so-called ordered logistic regression. And, and I'm just showing it here to see how that the dependent variable was coded. The importance here is when we pulled the, the when we coded the data, for example, whether, whether the recommendation was um, uh, conditional or weak for or against, or whether the recommendation was, uh, was strongly for or against, this was done without consider consideration of direction. So regardless of direction, we actually um, uh, 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 we pull them together in the main analysis. Plus, we have a, a we have a, a value. Obviously, if, if a panel member couldn't decide for or against. However, grade really discourage you uh, discourages you not to make recommendations. Um, the, 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 the officially grade will tell you you know will try to make recommendations and use a recommendation uh, that you, can, uh, uh, you can't really issue neither for or against sparingly. So therefore we thought, okay, let's just, and then plus, when we make recommendation, we don't make a recommendation for or against at the same time. We make recommendation for and separately against. So we did actually logistic regression. We, we, we dropped actually um, uh, the, the, those votes that people could not uh, the, the undecided vote, so to speak, and then run analysis, run the model um, only looking uh, for recommendation and only looking against recommendation, arguing that these particular, uh, uh, the, 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 assuming that these particular uh, uh, recommendation may be affected by different factors. And you could see it, for me, actually, it was really most interesting that uh, that uh, your vote it, um, were completely divided. There's a, a maximum uncertainty in terms of whether uh, a whether approach particular is, is is acceptable or not, so to speak. So I'll I'll show you the the the, uh, the results in a minute. I hope I'm coming across. Um, I know this is more a little bit more technical than I should than probably I should have done, but nevertheless, it, 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 there's a. It's relevant to the uh, findings, so therefore I spent some time really explaining this, what exactly we did it. Now, okay, so this is really just a general result of, a, of, the, of the main model. Dependent variable, again, just remember, it's a, a panel uh, uh, issue that they couldn't vote. It's a neither for or against, weakly for or against, or strongly for or against, without, uh, with, uh, regardless of direction. As you, and uh, in the squares, those are the grade factors. Circles represent non-grade factors. Plus shows positive association minus negative association. Orange shows statistically significant association. Uh, green shows statistically not significant association. Where we actually have this, um, uh, the, 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 uh, you know, the red outlining here shows that, uh, that these factors remain uh, uh, statistically significant in all models we've done. I'm going to show you actually three results of three models here. We actually did define models, but I, I, uh, in, in which we a priori all defined. But uh, 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 but I'm showing you really the key key results here. As you can see here, basically grade factors actually dominated uh, more decisions than non-grade factors. Um, in terms of a strength of association, certainty of evidence, which I don't show you odds ratio here. Uh, uh, it's actually uh, the, uh, had the strongest association with the, with the, with the issuing uh, uh, with the strength of recommendation. Um, uh, and uh, in, the, in terms of non-grade factors, we have uh, age uh, remain constant across all the models. And in this particular case, it, intolerance of uncertainty showed negative association, meaning you the more intolerant to, to uncertainty, the, the low probability of issuing strong recommendation into me. Now, if you go now, this is a second model, and this is really just looking 
uh, uh, the association with, uh, with a panel member issued recommendation only for uh, intervention, endorsing intervention which they can endorse it weakly or conditionally for or strongly conditionally for. As you can see here, all of these fact, the great factors dominate this uh, the, the decision making. Um, uh, again, uh, this time, uh, role of chair becomes also important because the methodologist, uh, the more methodologist, uh, had a tendency to issue uh, uh, um, uh, less uh, the the the. the uh, uh, less strong uh, 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 recommendation than non-methodologist, and again, age um, <coughs> and tendency to maximize show the uh, show this uh, positive association of, of non-grade factor. Interestingly, experience um, uh, did show up here is in terms of negative association, meaning more experience you are, the low the the. Uh, uh, the low probability of going to issue the strong uh, recommendation. But overall, when it comes to for issuing of uh, 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 recommendation for particular intervention, a uh, great factor appears to be actually uh, dominating uh, uh, association. Now, when it comes to the uh, non-grade factors, uh, when, when it comes to issuing recommendation against the intervention, weakly against, strongly against, um, Non-grade factors appears to dominate uh, association, as, it, as, it, as, as it's shown here. Um, importance, values, and preferences appear actually to be only great factors that the panel member appears to uh, consider when they issue a recommendation against uh, uh, against the intervention. And here, just the same things, kind of showing in one slide to kind of visually present how different factors affect uh, the different factors play a role. Um, when when we when uh, recommendations are issued for or against, for example, recommendations, or when we take in, uh, in, in account uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, when we take in, in, in account when we when we when we don't take account actually uh, a direction of a recommendation. Again, you can see three models, three different factors depending what was uh, the three the three different set of factors affect decisions. Uh, depending on on whether the panels voted for or against uh, a recommendation. Now, in some cases, um, uh, pro predictive probability that panel will issue, for example, strong recommendations were very high. When panel members would issue strong recommendations, uh, when the panel members would uh, would. Uh, uh, would consider a quality evidence high, and they thought that balance of benefit uh, and the harms are strongly in favor of intervention over, com uh, over comparator, then predicted probability that panel will actually issue strong recommendation is greater than 90 percent. So those are really type of the of the recommendation that one would think actually will be typically used in quality improvement kind of a metrics, uh, as a quality improvement metrics. But, so in some case, pre pre predictive probability was uh, uh, very high. Now, what I mentioned to you before, uh, uh, a second ago, then the, 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 panel, the different factors dominate the decision making when panel issues recommendation for versus, uh, versus uh, against recommendation. As you all know, one of the key epistemological principles of evidence-based medicine that there is a relationship between quality, uh, quality or certain underlying evidence and the uh, willingness of people really to, to, to endorse such recommendation. In other words, we believe there is kind of a relationship between a certain evidence and the truth. You know, the closer, the higher quality evidence, the closer we are to the truth, so to speak, and therefore we are more willing to, to endorse such intervention, um, uh, um, uh, we are more willing to, to support such intervention. However, psychological risk should, does indicate that, uh, that, for example, double negation or voting against uh, uh, intervention is actually cognitively more taxing than voting for intervention, which, which goes in literally so-called yes bias. We have a tendency to, to acquiesce with a statement that requires less cognitive efforts than when we're rejecting a given statement. Therefore, 
you have actually, uh, uh, so the question really becomes now whether the epistemological principle of evidence-based medicine will actually uh, uh, will uh, win, so to speak. So should we see the, 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 the uh, relationship between quality evidence and strength recommendations regardless of, of whether panel vote for or against, or we should see completely different separation. In other words, that, that uh, relationship will uh, hold when panels actually vote for, but will not hold when panel uh, uh, vote against. And this will show the next slide, uh, if I can move it, yeah. As you can see here, actually, we appear there is a, there's evidence of so-called yes bias when clinical practice guidelines issue recommendations for versus against. Um, on, on the left side here, you, uh, there is a relationship highly statistically significant according to the classical epistemological principle of evidence-based medicine, the, the, you know, the higher quality evidence, the stronger, uh, uh, the, the, the probability of issuing stronger recommendation is higher. That relationship completely disappears when, when a panel voted against. On the left side when they voted for, on the uh, right side when they voted uh, against. We think this is really important kind of a finding um, because uh, given the fact that, that, that the guidelines are so widely used and followed, um, just uh, uh, issuing or uh, asking panels to vote for or against may make major differences for practice of medicine. Now, we will also very, remember we, 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 uh, we collected data on consensus. ASH panel issued the data, uh, the, the consensus. But we actually collect the data also on any uh, or all individual judgment. And so our, uh, to understand group uh, judgment better, we wanted to really know whether individual judgment agree with actually with the, uh, the group judgment, meaning consensus judgment. As you can see here, basically, kappa uh, or agreement between in a judgment related strength recommendation, individual panel member group judgment was really relatively fair. It was better than chance, obviously, but it wasn't really um, uh, very high. Um, uh, we had only, uh, we were able to collect data before the meeting, after the meeting, only from two panels. And when you look actually at those two inter-panel agreement, again, was kind of relatively fair or rather low, um, but better than chance indicating the group decision did affect actually a uh, uh, level of agreement. Um, uh, uh, again, slightly better than chance, but far from being uh, 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 at the level of kappa that, that is considered uh, uh, high agreement. Sorry, I'm always having, okay. So, Mary, uh, okay. I finished the main talk. The question is now, do you want to go with the conflict of interest or should I go to the concluding, uh, concluding re uh, uh, remarks? Yeah, thanks, Ben. So um, before I answer that, I'm going to ask you a question that came in from an audience member. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so do you have a model that examines the association between decision-making factors and the direction of the recommendation? Uh, that's what I thought I was showing. Uh, model right. Three. I'm sorry it didn't come across. Uh, when you yeah. say yeah, so when you say, um, uh, did you did you just say model three or? Model two and three, let me just go across. Yeah, yeah. you can go back to those. Yeah, so the model one here on the far left side, did, the, 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 this showed the association without direction, regardless of direction here, and also included the, the, uh, the included undecided vote. Model two in the, uh, in, uh, in the middle and model three uh, on the right, uh, the, mo the, the model that that are done according to direction only. Model in the middle considered all, 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 only uh, association with, uh, 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 with the issuing recommendation for intervention. Could be weak or conditional for or strong intervention. And, we and for this model, we, we did not use undecided uh, votes. Uh, on the right side is, this, uh, is, is a model of, uh, voting against uh, uh, a, a recommendation, again, weakly or conditionally against or strongly against. Um, uh, so, 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 so again, yes, uh, the model two and three, meaning middle and right, 
shows association uh, when we take considera uh, direction in, uh, in consideration. Um, and mother, on the left side is the association when we actually do not take uh, a direction into consideration. Related to that then, given the um, yes bias um, implicit in evidence-based medicine, is it then that model one would um, be uh, a more uh, tr true result if in fact all recommendations were written so that they weren't cognitively taxing? So uh, I'll have a, I'll, I'll actually, uh, uh, I'll actually have a, some, some, some thought to say about that. So model one, uh, model one does, does combines, uh, combine both uh, for and against. And if you take into consideration that actually there is a yes bias, then probably model one, uh, 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 pro model, pro model one probably wouldn't be actually the, the, the most truthful model, so to speak, okay. if you believe that uh, yes bias is real. And again, as I said, I haven't really discussed it with my other colleagues that the, that is the process, and, and I'm actually looking forward to further explanation. But right now, I'm telling you my thoughts on this one. Okay. So, so, so there, I have some very smart uh, uh, co-investigators. They may come up with this. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Thank you for answering those questions. So um, back to your question of should you proceed with the COI aspect, um, we um, have some time. I don't have any more questions that have come in from the audience. And so I think it could be interesting if you would share um, your conflict of interest um, uh, work here related to this um, work that you're doing. Yeah, so, so what actually happened, uh, 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 I think let me just go go back here and then, uh, so when we, so this is repeating uh, uh, the, we, we're repeating the model three when we actually looked for association be, uh, between the, all these great non-grade uh, great, uh, non -grade factors with uh, issuing recommendation against intervention. Um, for, uh, surprisingly to us, in a way, uh, uh, so P Ash Panel has a very elaborate conflict of interest policy, and they actually, when uh, when the number of uh, when they judge actually that people are conflicted, they actually ask uh, 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 those p panel members not to participate in, the, in a consensus discussion. They can they, they vote is not really counter, so to speak. But we did collect data from these people who, who officially did not vote uh, the ASH panels, but we asked them actually how they would vote it. And so interestingly, recusal from vote, voting, as you can see here on a, on a, on a right side uh, in a circle, was statistically significant um, uh, associated uh, with, a, uh, with a strength recommendation against intervention. So when we try, then, so you can see here the number of factors on the left side really showed um, the, 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 the left side. I show here the number of factors that are all statistically significant, associate, statistically significantly associated with the with the recommendation uh, uh, to vote against uh, against in, intervention. And then we looked actually if, uh, now to, to understand, because remember, when people are conf uh, have conflict of interest, the qu we don't really know mechanism of the conflict. Uh, I, I doubt that anybody said, look, I'm conflicted and uh, I have self-interest here, I'm going to really vote certain ways. Um, so there must be, you know, there, 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 there should be, um, uh, so what, what is exactly, is there kind of mechanism that they can explain uh, how would actually, how does it actually work in terms of when people actually have a conflict of interest. So we found, that, so we looked at what's known statistically interaction. When, when any, any of these factors interact with the conflict of interest or in this particular case recusal from, uh, uh, the, uh, recusal from voting. And we found actually that a, a significant interaction was detected uh, for two factors. When panel members, um, uh, were uh, 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 with the factors of so-called intolerance of, of uncertainty and tendency to the um, uh, to uh, to the rational thinking, let me show show you what I ha what I actually uh, what I'm trying to say here. So, 
oh. Ben, while, excuse me, Ben, while you're uh, uh, advancing, I want to let you know we did get two questions that have come in. Not related to COI, though, related to what you presented before. So, uh, so you, you, do you want to read it or, yeah, or? Do you want to finish your COI and then we'll, I want to make sure that we have the time to ask those questions, so. Okay, you so tell yeah, me. I, have a, I think I'll be three or four slides and I'll be finishing. Okay. So, so if, you, if you're interested in, uh, in terms of looking at mechanism of conflict interest, what's really interesting here uh, that you can see that, that uh, on the left side, that, that the people actually have attended, so it seems that if you conflicted, uh, and, uh, and red shows uh, people who were accused and, and blue those who were not accused, people actually who, who were accused, like almost that, 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 that uh, tendency toward rational thinking seems to be almost suppressed here. There's no really association for this group, but while those people actually who, who, who didn't have a conflict, there was a strong association with, uh, with the, the tendency toward to engagement in a, a so-called rational deliberative thinking to the point that actually the, uh, that the probability of, uh, of, of issuing strong recommendation uh, dramatically changed from more than 85% to less than 10% uh, 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 depending how much more propensity to the deliberative thinking they, uh, they actually uh, uh, displayed. Quite interesting. So you would argue maybe conflict of interest kind of a, in a way works that suppress our, 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 our tendency to kind of reflect on, on, the, on, on, on the issue what's going on. Opposite what's seen uh, when uh, in interaction conflict of interest with actually intolerance or the, with, uh, the intolerance of uncertainty, the more uncertain you are, the less um, the, um, the, uh, the 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 uh, and this is probably expected uh, the the higher chance that that you will issue less uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the the probability that you issue actually um, uh, strong recommendation which would dramatically drop. So it appears that there are two psychological mechanisms that can actually explain how potentially conflict of interest actually can work. So. So, so, the, so, so, uh, which we found quite, quite interesting. Uh, and so, let me just then conclude my presentation and then open for further discussion. So, um, uh, so I think it's, uh, uh, the, 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 the guidelines panels have not been really extensively studied in real life uh, setting, and we think this is the first comprehensive assessment of guidelines group decision making in real life setting. What, what it really, what our results indicate that the factors associated with the great conceptual framework prove to be highly, uh, the, 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 they seem to be highly significant in terms of determining strength recommendations, indicating that panel appears to adhere to normative, this evidence to recommendation instruction um, when they're making uh, 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 group-based decision recommendations. So it, uh, um, this is really uh, very important because there's a whole literature in, in uh, decision making where the normative or descriptive factors dominate decision making. In a piece, when you introduce normative uh, framework, you actually suppress descriptive framework and basically telling you, look, you can expect to get what you, what you, what you think you're going to get. In other words, policymakers and user guidelines who apply grade methods may expect the guidelines panels will adhere to grade methods. Nevertheless, even with this highly structured grade process, panel members I showed you actually demonstrated um, pretty large variability in their responses. Therefore, we believe we shouldn't be really uh, ignoring these collective individual panel member responses, and probably somehow we should be combining them with that consensus judgment that, that appears some panels uh, are exclusively working with. So regardless that, uh, so we, so I think in general we can say, you know, grades get, you know, gets you what you, what you, what you, what you buy, so to speak, you know, you get what you bought, but, but, but methods can be improved. For example, um, uh, uh, the agreement between individual panel member judgment and consensus judgment uh, was uh, poor and probably can be improved. Um, qualitative analysis indicated that, uh, that uh, the discussion was mostly dominated by chair and co-chair, which means 
you know, better maybe training of chair and co-chair to run how to run the meeting to be more inclusive probably would be actually potentially beneficial. I also did show that the different quantity method, methods show the different uh, associ association of different predictors, including actually uh, um, uh, evidence that would appear to be yes bias, that the panel have inclination to favor yes uh, more than no, and we think uh, the solution to, to avoiding guest bias is really to express each PICO question in terms of four recommendations. Because as you well know, uh, the, the grade and most guidelines panel, uh, they adhere to so-called PICO framework. So it's a, there's a patient population, intervention, comparator, and outcome, and, and, and typically vote, uh, so they, they typically the, 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 the question is a frame whether, uh, whether you would vote uh, for or against this particular in, uh, intervention in comparison with, uh, with, uh, uh, with other intervention. And because vote for A is automatically vote against, vote against B, and vote for B is vote against A, therefore I would think every pick of question can be expressed as recommendation for intervention or vote for uh, intervention, therefore this uh, uh, yes bias could be eliminated. Um, we found some interesting uh, data on conflict of interest. We would like actually to pursue this uh, because uh, we, 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 uh, because so far we just showed we saw association, but really don't have a data on particularly directly the conflict that potentially can be directly linked to those recommendations where panel members were accused from. So, so in, uh, we, uh, in terms of what we've done so far in terms of publication dissemination of fi findings. First qualitative paper uh, that I actually presented, uh, uh, result that I br briefly presented here, they, they are now under review, it was submitted for publications. Most important question for us is, will data from the ASH panel, which is remember, use very structured evidence recommendation framework, be general, generalizable to other panels, which uh, uh, the panels who, uh, which use uh, GRADE, but, but they, they're not necessarily using um, a structured evidence to recommendation framework. I think that's like a probably most important question. Uh, so, um, uh, so really most important for me today is to appeal to all the audience uh, uh, if they are um, working with some guidelines panels and are they participating in panels to really uh, send me an email and say and if they're willing uh, to actually allow us actually to to collect data on, uh, on, uh, on uh, from their panels. We're in the process actually collecting data from American College of Rheumatology, uh, starting with discussion uh, that, uh, with the International Society for, uh, for the point of okay, ultrasound, a nice, uh, uh, which officially does not use grade, but consider similar factors uh, uh, as, as the grade actually I'm, uh, potentially, I'm hoping they, they express some interest, and hopefully, maybe we can uh, we can actually get nice uh, also enrolled in our study. Um, so, uh, so, so again, I'm strongly appealing and asking uh, for anybody who who uh, the, the, the is, is is interested in this kind of work uh, or uh, and they have uh, access to panels and they like to to collaborate with us, please send me an email. And I am now just uh, in, in my final uh, slide. I want to re I, uh, I want to thank uh, agency for healthcare research uh, and quality for supporting this research, and uh, and Mary for being so responsive to all my uh, bothering with emails and everything else uh, to really to provide the right guidance where to to take this research. And we obviously want to. Think we we couldn't do this without panels uh, uh, Ash panels agreeing uh, to participate in our studies. Uh, Robert Kunkel and his staff has been fantastic in terms of really allowing us access and also giving us the data they collected, so we didn't have ne necessary to collect and duplicate the uh, effort. And Ash leadership for supporting this project. And I am now uh, going to stop here and be very happy to really uh, answer any further questions or engage in further discussion. 
Thank you so much, Ben. Um, just to let you know, Ben, I shared your email address through the chat feature with everyone since I realize we don't have it on a slide. Um, so everyone, look at your chat feature for Ben's email address if you are, in fact, interested um, in uh, connecting with him about uh, being part of a study or um, have other questions about what he's done so far. M maybe things will come to you um, after this presentation and you can feel directly, feel free to reach out directly uh, to Ben with your questions. Um, in the meantime, Ben, um, thank you so much um, for all of the time that you've given uh, to prepare for this uh, presentation, um, to pull your poll questions together um, and their response, you know, the, the, the response items. Um, it, it takes work um, to put these on and to, for, for the presenter um, in particular, so thank you for uh, putting effort into it for our community. Here are the two uh, questions that came in. Um, so one is um, uh, curiosity about um, in these ash panels that you studied so far, um, were they addressing very simple, and that's a, a qu quoted um, term, simple, because, you know, what's simple, but were these very simple clinical questions or guidelines? Were these, you know, simple? Um, the, the inquirer uh, guesses the factors, um, decision-making factors, would be very different for interventions that are complex and or very contextual or more population-based rather than one-on-one -on -one patient care-based. So, uh, that, so here's my, uh, the, the first we don't really have a data, so we'll be like, but I kind of agree that probably is going to be the case. But what I think is going to happen, and I don't really know, we would like to really remember, it's very important to put this in context, context normative versus this, uh, descriptive decision-making factors. So I do believe the different contextual factors will probably pan out in terms of non-grade factors. Um, and, and that probably the, 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 the uh, discussion is, is probably right. At the same time, I think grade uh, factors and like uh, certainty evidence will continue to dominate uh, uh, association. Again, I don't really know, but that's, that's kind of my, uh, my uh, thinking as, 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 we, as we move uh, with this project. So it'd be really nice to enroll actually in a number of panels. They have these complex kind of uh, decisions to see whether what, what, what I'm just saying is actually correct or not. Mm -hmm. I agree, Ben. Um, and the other question, I think you kind of have answered, but maybe you want to um, expand on it a little bit. So um, the ASH process um, has had active involvement of methodologists that were great experts and highly involved in great development, right? Um, would you expect different results in organizations that use some aspects of grade but don't adhere to it so rigidly? Rigidly, and you noted the rheumatology group uses grade to some extent. So, can you expand on that? Of what would you expect in terms of what the results will be for you know that organization's um, work um, in your study, and then any others who don't even use grade or right who don't use grade at all? So, so uh, remember, for our study, uh, maybe we'll make that exception with the NICE because they are actually uh, considering sim similar type of, uh, of factors. For our study, eligibility criteria, you have to use grade, or, or you have to say that you're using grade, we'll be put this way. But some panel, as you know, there are grades and shade and grades. So some panel members are very structured like ASH. They're really using uh, um, you know, evidence to recommendation framework, and, and they basically follow the process uh, to the letter, so to speak. I believe other, uh, uh, many other panels uh, use grade in general framework, but not necessarily evidence to recommendation framework. American College of uh, uh, Rheumatology used grade, uh, grade uh, but not uh, evidence to recommendation framework. We just collected data. I am dying to know the answer is. is <laughs> <laughs> as well as you do. So, so yes, that is the really key question, whether, uh, whether general conceptual framework of using grade will actually generate similar type of, uh, of, of association uh, 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 as, the, 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 as the framework which is very structured um, and, um, uh, you know, follows uh, to the letter, so to speak. 
Great, thank you, Ben. Any other last questions? Um, just checking in to see if, uh, Urado, if you received any more questions from the, from the community. I've not. Um, if you've not, I think no, we're at good. Great. Thanks, Gerardo. I think we're at a good point to wrap it up. We're right at the uh, at the end. And uh, for those who have uh, meetings to get ready to go to uh, at the half hour mark on the clock, um, it's time to go. Right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Stay uh, stay tuned uh, for more webinars to follow. Um, and Ben, we'll be back in touch. Thank you so much uh, for your participation today. Thank you. Appreciate your opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye, yeah. everyone.